Hello, good morning. Um, yeah, uh, actually, like today, uh, it's cool. It's a cool one because it's the first time we're gonna speak about the mastabas. Uh, just resuming from the last episode, mastabas. What are what are mastabas? We don't. We are not sure that if the. Ma well, we are sure that some mastabas for sure were used as tombs, uh, but when it comes to pharaohs of the first and second dynasty. We are not totally sure if those were the actual burial chambers or uh, if the burial chambers were in Abydos. And uh, the last theory uh, from archaeology is that uh, it was the pharaohs used to be buried uh, in, in Abydos, in the burials of Abydos. Um, but I don't. F I personally like. I, I kind of like. There is an argument, there are a lot of arguments against that idea and these arguments come from Walter Emery that directly and I want in this video to show you what are the arguments for, for this theory and uh, but it's not it's not a big deal for me, like, it's okay <laughs> if it's one or another, we still have the mastabas, amazing structures and we're gonna go through a mastaba which is called 3357 and it's the mastaba of Horhaha so, so far is the first mastaba ever, but we are not sure which came first between this one and the one in Nakada. We are not really sure because the one in Nakada is supposed to belong to Natotep, which was the wife of Narmer. So it's kind of the same period, you know, like 10 years, 20 years of difference, we can't really tell. But yeah, uh, so yeah, cool. Uh, like, uh, Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like, we're gonna go through a lot of tombs soon. And uh, if you like the video, like the video, and let's start. Hey, here we are. So there is a lot to say about this tomb. So let's uh, let's start, and uh, I hope it's not gonna be like too long of a video. So um, Horhaha built not just the triple tomb in Abydos. But he also built a mastaba in the north cemetery of, of, of Memphis. Now, it's the north cemetery. It was the only cemetery of Memphis back then. So you gotta imagine that Memphis was a new city. The capital was just born there and right now and right, you know, at that moment. And he first built, he was the first to build a mastaba. And uh, so, so there was nothing there before, before him. I suppose <laughs> so. Um, and uh, everything that I know, uh, is, uh, first, first I want to tell you like I have to amend. Like uh, I did a couple of mistakes in the last video, so I want to say that uh, actually I mentioned that uh, we were gonna go through the tomb of Waji and Udimu, which were not Pharaoh. No, it's wrong. They were Pharaohs. The thing is that I didn't know those names because those names are secondary names of. Waji was Jet, and Udimu was Den. So I didn't, and I didn't know th uh, those names were the correspondent names of that Jet and Jen. So I, you know, Pharaoh has different names uh, throughout history and whatever. So I didn't know again. Sorry, but now we know. And uh, yeah, so the tomb, the mastaba of Hohaha is called three three five seven. And everything that I kind of, that means not everything, but a lot of information I found was on this book, which is the first book of Sakara made by Walter Emery. And uh, the whole book is about this mastaba of Horhaha, which was the first one that he kind of uh, excavated. Excavated, it was not the first one he excavated, it's the first one um, uh, of the early dynastic period that he excavated. Um, in collaboration with Zaki Youssef Saad, so it's like, and this is, book is from 1939, and the excavation took place the in the 37-38 period. And so I suggest to, like, I'm gonna put this in the description, and uh, you're gonna find this book if you like to, uh, if you like to go through it. Um, so. Um, um, as, a, as, a, as I was mentioning, like this, so, for, so this is the tomb of like, the 3357 Mastaba, and um, was identified uh, as a Horhafa or Horhaha, uh, but actually, uh, um, like uh, Walter Emery 
uh, didn't actually like he was identifying Hohaha with Menace, and uh, so he believed this was the first pharaoh ever. But yeah, archaeologists, you know, uh, just uh, developed, <laughs> and so Hohaha is the tomb. Of, it's supposed to be the tomb of Hohaha. And uh, so there are a few arguments uh, that are in favor of the theory that the Mastaba was indeed the tomb of Oahaha. And these arguments came from, from Walter Emini. I'm gonna tell you uh, what they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven kind of arguments. So the first will be um, this tomb is in front of the capital he founded. So this is a good argument uh, to, to be, to, to, for this Mastaba to be a tomb then it would have been very hard to move the body from here which memphis we we know we know we believe that the pharaoh was living in the capital at this point would be hard to move that the body dead to habidos because it would take 15 days and in those 15 days you know the body would decay because it didn't know mummification back then and uh, which makes me think uh, about the arm of Jer. Maybe that was not a a, an early dynastic pharaoh because they didn't know mummification. Still mysteries. And uh, the tomb is enormous in comparison to the one of Abydos. And uh, there are subsidiary graves uh, around. It's not true that there are not. There are subsidiary graves. Um, then they found here seven more than 700 jars bearing the name of Orhaha. Uh, if, it, if it was not Orhaha, who else? You know. And then uh, normal because normally the jars uh, were sealed with the owner uh, of the jar name and the, the name of the pharaoh. And in this case, it was just the name of the pharaoh. So we know that those jars belong to Orhaha. And so, but he, like Walter Emery, is, is the first one who claimed that this is not a conclusive uh, set of arguments. So he was still not totally sure. He said this could be, but he was not sure. But anyway, so the discovery, how did they find this? Um, uh, actually, so this is what they found, like, it's not, it's not the whole thing. They also found this beautiful stone jars, uh, jars or whatever, like, I don't know how you want to call them, but I found so many, like, uh, uh, so basically they, how they found it, they found a basic uh, solar boat, and then was like, the solar boat was close to this mastaba, and because of the humidity and the moisture from the air, they, they kind of, uh, what, like, the, the moisture was sitting on top of the sand, and obviously the darker area, there was a darker area of the sand, which was the one which was clo shallower uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the ruins, okay? So whenever there was a deep thing, the, 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 the sand would look lighter, and whenever there was a ruin, it would look darker. So this is how they find the tomb, it's pretty easy. Um, uh, yeah, so this is how they found <laughs> Um, now, the, this is the picture from actually Walter Emery, and uh, you can you can tell the Joser Pyramid is uh, at the background, a user cuff, and then we are in the north part, you see, and this is a beautiful picture because all the locals here and the tent. This was already, you know, already fully uh, kind of excavated already, and this is the northeast side of the Mastaba. For, what, what you can tell already from this picture is that First of all, the mastaba is not like the whole thing is in ruin. Okay, it's not like it was supposed to be very tall. By the way, I'm gonna tell you later. And so, what you can tell for already from this picture is that you have the palace facade. Okay, which we find uh, in Abydos, we find that rhythm just in Kazakhemui's tomb, uh, Kazakhemui enclosure. Sorry. And so, so this is pretty interesting because the topic of the facade. Of, of the palace facade was already in place by this time. Interesting, and then you can see there are a lot of spaces. So, and the, what you see here is just the structure above. There are two uh, kind of. Well, I'm gonna tell you later. But so the, the mastaba is made by two parts: one which is on top, and one which is the structure below. 
Um, so these pictures uh, also show you what um, the, the, the palace facade as well, and uh, shows you the corridor um, that you know is like 1.2 meters of corridor because the mastaba was not just uh, the, the, the facade is not um, well, you know they had a double wall around a double enclosure not too tall to hide the facade but tall enough to, 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 to feel it as a corridor. Um, I suppose this is the Bent Pyramid. I'm, I'm not sure. No, it's Abu Sir. So that part in the in the in the lens in the horizon in the horizon is Abu Sir, uh, which is at just at the north of this site. Uh, again, another picture shows you like the the external corridor here and. Uh, I mean, just the colors of this picture is so beautiful. <laughs> um, you can tell it's mud brick. The whole thing is is mud brick, and uh, was supposed to be covered, uh, roofed with um, with uh, with timber, uh, but but not here. So I'm gonna show you later. And this is the double wall I was telling you. So you see, there is a corridor here and another corridor here. And so these two walls are the enclosure walls uh, of the structure, and they haven't found any door. So this was not supposed to be accessible as a mastaba. We will see in the future that mastaba will be accessible, but but this time it was just a burial, uh, as far as we know. And in more detail, you can tell here in more detail the, the facade. Now this rhythm is is such a it sets the the rules for architecture in, in ancient Egypt. By it's so crazy. This is like 3000 BC, and it's already everything is kind of in place, more or less. Just not stone structures, but they're, they're gonna come soon. So it's just it's mind blowing. And another picture, amazing picture of the of the mastaba. Now this is in more detail. This is the now you can tell the, the it was full of this holes in the ground and those holes were we don't really know what they were doing there we don't know uh, in the book of uh, Walter Emery there was nothing I found that was uh, compelling as a theory so we don't know because there was no need to make a roof there there was no need uh, this is outside so. and then you see the white plaster okay so the whole thing will be plastered in, in white color and this is the Robert Hun, <laughs> and uh, and you can tell here that the whole structure. It, this is the uh, down downstairs, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, it's supposed to be down like downstairs. There are no stairs, but down in the the, the, the bottom of the structure, the underground floor. And uh, you can tell here the reeds, the rhythm of the reeds. So the whole space was finished with reeds, which is super cool. And this will be the roof of the underground. Part. Uh, it would be timber timber beams and uh, timber planks. Uh, I found that this timber will come from Lebanon. I don't know why, but yeah, I found this information, uh, which is curious because the Osiris myth was mentioning that the tree underneath uh, way and underneath where Osiris was uh, kind of resting was uh, was was in Lebanon. So curious. And now this is the section, so you can tell already that there, there are two levels, one underground, and uh, and you can tell from from this is like these are like three meters tall probably, or a little bit less than three meter maybe, and uh, so you can tell right the structure is excavated in the bedrock, and then so they don't they didn't need any like foundation here, the foundation is the rock itself, and then they put in the mud brick walls. And then they, you know, they covered it up, sand on top, and all the jars and potteries were in this above structure. And underneath, uh, I'm not sure, but <laughs> so no sarcophagus has been found, nothing has been found. So, but you can tell the difference here. Everything is in mud brick, like the walls and stuff. But down in the, in, the, in the bottom area, it's you know finished with the reeds, which is super cool. And the double walls, you can tell in the perimeter here. Uh, so this is like the plan of the, um, ex we will call it the plan of the excavation, let's say. 
and so you can tell the more gravel kind of uh, soil here and then the bedrock uh, it's more it's more like here uh, and so this is the plan now the plan you can tell it's a 41 kind of 41 meters by 16 uh, this, but this doesn't count the, 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 the enclosure walls and there are 27 chambers upstairs and five uh, hidden underneath so and you can tell like the beautiful rhythm of the facade here it took me a while to, to, to make it to draw it uh, but one curious thing I, I found out is that uh, this orientation uh, it's very similar to the orientation of Kazekenwi enclosure I'm gonna show you in a second uh, just to remind you and uh, you can see here this is the Kazakhemwe, the Gizr al Mulir, and also the. No, okay, this one no, for sure. But the Gizr al Mulir, yes. So you can tell this is the Gizr al Mulir, and the Mastaba is oriented in the same way. It's, uh, I mean, I, 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 I didn't go there and check him, but you can tell from the, from the plan, okay. So the, the orientation is similar. I don't know why they were pointing in that direction. Uh, because it's not true north and uh, also there is no there is no sign of any like open op opening and stuff so but you, yeah but it's north oriented so 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 there is like an orientation it's not a square if it was a square you know it's you can tell like it's not oriented in any way in a way but in here yes so but I don't know it's a mystery uh, to me so I think this was kind of it, and uh, pretty simple Mastaba, and uh, the next one will be the Mastaba of K, number 3500, and uh, it's the first, um, actually I'm not sure if we're gonna do this, well, let's see next week, but yeah, so far this was the, the thing, let me know what you think about the topic of the Mastabas not being or being tombs. Uh, because it's, I think it's a relevant, uh, it's a relevant topic. So, yeah, so I guess I see you next week, and have a good day. <laughs>